Welcome to just one of Skillcap's famous class guides that are the most valuable resource available that actually help you improve in Arena. This is just one of many videos that are a part of a comprehensive course for how to play Resto Druids like a pro. We spent hundreds of hours developing these courses with players that have spent thousands of hours perfecting their craft. This allows you to learn all the secrets and strategies of the world's best in just a matter of minutes. For everything you need to go from feeling hopeless in PvP to being the teammate everyone wants and actually start climbing, be sure to check out Skillcapped after this if you're serious about improving. Hey everyone, and welcome to step 2 of the Restoration Druid PvP Guide. In this video, we'll be going over all the essentials on how you should be healing as a Resto Druid in Shadowlands, ranging from how to deal with basic enemy damage to how you should be healing enemy burst in the most efficient way possible. Before we get into how to deal with heavy burst and specific scenarios, let's start off with the basics. Knowing how to heal through high sustained damage output from the enemy team is essential to winning any arena. So, how should you be healing through sustained damage as a Resto Druid? Well, most of your healing comes from healing over time effects, better known as HOTS. Now, which HOTS are there, and how should you be using them to heal through sustained damage? Well, you should always be playing with the Germination talent, which allows you to put two Rejuvenations on a target. Rejuvenation will be a big source of your healing in every single game, and you should always strive to have two of them up on any target that is taking a decent amount of sustained damage. On top of using your rejuvenations, another key aspect of Resto Druid's healing is using your Life Bloom. This can give you clear casting procs, which can make your next regrowth cost no mana. So, should you always have two rejuvenations and a Life Bloom on your teammates? Well, not really. Life Bloom can only be used on one target, so make sure that you apply it to a target that is taking the most damage. If you have to constantly switch your Life Bloom around, it will cost you quite a lot of mana and globals, as in most games, you will be playing with the focused growth PvP talent for additional healing. So, two rejuves and a Life Bloom. Is that enough to heal through sustained damage? No. Something else that you need to do to increase your healing output for sustained damage is to use your Soul of the Forest on a Rejuvenation to make it heal 200% more. This is a great way to increase your healing output massively. You should often aim to use a Soul of the Forest on a Rejuvenation if there is high sustained damage coming from the enemy team. As you can see in this clip here, the Resto Druid and Hunter are initiating their own setup and the Rep Paladin is therefore running for his life. We might be taking a little bit of damage. However, the Paladin does not have wings active and the Priest is CC'd, so there is no heavy damage incoming. If there's almost no chance that burst damage is coming, it is almost always better to use your Soul of the Forest for a Rejuvenation. If you are expecting heavy damage and burst, regrowth or even nature swiftness combined with regrowth is the way to go. Now, that's still not quite all of it. What more can you do to increase your healing output? Well, the Covenant of Choice for PvP right now is Necrolord because of the Adaptive Swarm ability. This ability increases the healing of your HOTS on the target by 20%. Not only does it increase the healing of your HOTS, but it also counts toward your mastery. You should always try to use your Adaptive Swarm as often as possible on any targets that has a couple of HOTS on them. 20% extra healing is a lot. Alright, now that you know about which HOTs are the most important to use, let's get to another very important aspect of your healing, Mastery. So, what does your Mastery do exactly? Well, for every HOT that you have on your target, your healing is increased by your Mastery percentage. So, in order to best deal with sustained enemy damage, you should have two Rejuvenations on a target, a Life Bloom, and you should be using Adaptive Swarm. Once you have a solid set of HOTs, all your healing, including your single target heals like Regrowth and Swift Mend, will be doing a lot more healing because of your Mastery. If you have 6% Mastery for each HOT I have active, I will be doing 6% more healing to the target. As you can see in this clip, I Regrowth the Mage who has no HOTs on him whatsoever, and it does not heal for a large amount. However, when I then regrowth the Shadow Priest who is fully hotted, the regrowth heals for a lot more because of the way your mastery works. Alright, now that we've covered your HOTs and how your mastery works, let's now take a look at how you should be dealing with heavy burst damage. This is especially important in this extremely burst heavy meta. HOTs alone often won't be enough to keep your team topped off. First, let's take a look at Regrowth. On top of being a nice single target healing spell, Regrowth has a built-in HOT effect as well. The healing from the HOT itself is quite low and not really relevant, but what makes this important to know is that it counts toward your mastery. So, ideally you should always be trying to aim for as much uptime on Regrowth on your target as possible to ensure you're making the most out of your mastery. 
If you want to maximize mana efficiency here, try to use your clear casting procs. However, you shouldn't worry too much about your clear casting. You should still regrowth whenever it is needed. As you can see here, I'm using regrowth, but I don't have a clear casting proc. You should always regrowth when it is safe to do so, and your teammate or yourself is taking a decent amount of damage. Having a clear casting proc is nice as it saves you mana, but don't wait for a proc before using the spell. It's also great to use regrowth very often if you are dealing with heavy enemy damage. However, you do have to be a bit careful that you don't overdo it as it costs quite a lot of mana. On top of costing a lot of mana, it also has a cast time, unlike the majority of your healing toolkit, which is instant cast. Make sure that you're always alert for enemy interrupts as they can easily open up opportunities for the enemy team and force you to use your defensives. On top of having regrowth, you also have Swift Mend available. You should be using your Swift Mend as often as possible to make the most out of your soul of the forest. Swift Mend also provides a great amount of healing itself, but keep in mind, your Swift Mend is only usable if you have a rejuvenation, regrowth, or wild growth on your target. So to recap, let's take a look at what you should be doing step by step. The number one priority will be to get two rejuvenations and a life bloom on a target that is taking a solid amount of damage. Once you have a solid set of hots on your target, you want to apply Adaptive Swarm to make them heal for 20% more. Now it's time to start empowering your hots. Try to use your Soul of the Forest to apply a rejuvenation which will heal for 200% more. Finally, use your regrowth often to keep the heal over time effect up to maximize the effect of your mastery and add some single target healing to keep your team topped off. All right, now that you know how to deal with enemy sustained damage output, how should you be healing through burst damage? Firstly, you always want to make sure that you have hots on your target to increase your healing as much as possible by optimizing your mastery once again. If you do not have hots on your target, make sure to use your overgrowth as it will increase your healing on the target significantly. Once you have a set of hots active on your target, what's next? Should you just be spamming regrowths? Well, even though you could technically do that, spamming it is very mana inefficient as it costs quite a lot of mana and enemies will often have their interrupts ready as well. So let's dive into some things that you can do to heal a lot in heavy burst windows without having to cast. One key aspect of healing through heavy bursts will be to optimize the usage of your Swift Mend and Soul of the Forest. If you're spec into Soul of the Forest, which you should always be, after using your Swift Mend, your next regrowth or rejuvenation will heal for triple the amount. With a full set of hots rolling, Soul of the Forest Empowered Regrowth can easily heal for 20k. However, you can increase your regrowth healing even more. If you combine the Soul of the Forest buff with Nature's Swiftness, your next regrowth will heal for an additional 300%. Using your NS regrowth properly is extremely important to surviving heavy burst as a resto druid, as it will top your target no matter what. As you can see in this clip here, I use my NS regrowth on top of my Shadow Priest because he is under heavy burst by the enemy DK and Warrior. He also has the Sharpened Blade debuff which greatly reduces my healing done. Even with this effect active, a regrowth empowered by Nature's Swiftness and Soul of the Forest does a crazy amount of healing, easily keeping him alive. So what else can you do? Is there anything else that can be done to ensure maximum healing? Absolutely, and maxing the usage of the best PvP legendary, Verdant Infusion, which extends the duration of your heal over time effects on the target by 8 seconds. One pro tip that a lot of players don't know about right now is that you can use the Verdant Infusion legendary power to increase the duration of your Scenarian Ward. Scenarian Ward applies a 30 second buff to the target, which turns into an 8 second hot once the target takes from any source. Once the 8 second part of the spell is triggered, you can use your Verdant Infusion Legendary to increase the duration of the Scenarian Ward to 16 seconds, which is an absolute ton of healing output to deal with Heavy Burst. Alright, so we now have a good understanding of how to heal both sustained and burst damage, so it's now time to talk about how you should handle the start of the arena. The gates of your arena match have opened. What is it that you should be doing first? Well, you want to make sure that you give your teammate who is most likely to be targeted some heal over time effects before going into stealth. You have to make sure that you do this as quickly as possible, because if you don't, your target might already be in combat. If you heal a target which is in combat, you yourself will be put in combat as well, which prevents you from using your prowl ability, potentially sabotaging your opener. Alright, hopefully you managed to pre-hot your target before they got into combat and were able to use prowl. What should you be doing next? Well, this section focuses specifically on stopping and avoiding the enemy damage in the opener or something along those lines. One very popular talent, especially in 2v2, is Feral Affinity, which, among other things, allows you to use your rake from stealth to stun someone for 3 seconds. 
before the gates open. You should have already identified who your target will be and what your goal is in the specific matchup that you're playing. If you're facing a comp where a lot of their damage and momentum is created in the opener, like a rogue or a feral druid, it is almost always a good thing to stun them and follow up with a cyclone to stop their damage. So, cycloning defensively, how does that work? Well, let's say a rogue opens on one of your teammates from stealth. You can wild charge to the rogue and rake stun him from stealth to stop a bunch of damage. If you then follow up with a cyclone after the rake, you've essentially stopped all of the rogue's damage in the opener. But what about if you're taking Guardian Infinity for the game? Well, if you are playing that style, you can essentially do the same thing with Incapacitating Roar. You can position yourself in a way where it's easy for you to stop a cast with it, or of course any melee who is targeting you or your teammate. For instance, if you're facing a Warlock who is casting a big Chaos Bolt, you can use your Disorienting Roar to stop their cast, greatly reducing the amount of damage they'll do in the opener. And now that we've covered stopping your enemy's damage and setup effectiveness, what can you do in order to avoid damage and CC in the opener for yourself. Well, if you're playing a matchup where the goal is to be quite defensive, you can also stay back in stealth to make sure that the enemy team does not open on you, but is instead forced to open on one of your teammates. In that case, position yourself near a pillar in a way where it is hard for the enemy team to land CC on you. All right, so we've already covered dealing with both sustained and burst damage on your teammates, but what should you do if it's all directed at you? Well, it's time that you learn how to handle healing while being trained yourself. Firstly, it is important to note that Resto Druid as a specialization are quite squishy. If you do not prepare well before you get targeted, you can die very easily. So when and how should you prepare for being targeted? Well, it can be easy for the enemy team to swap to you if you're pushed in and playing aggressively, which will often be the case, especially if you're pushing in for cyclones. Therefore, before you push in, make sure to always apply some hots to yourself so that you never get caught in a situation where you get stunned without any hots on yourself. Let's take a look at an example. In this clip, the goal is to land CC on the Paladin. However, he is quite far away, so pushing in for CC heavily exposes the Resto Druid to damage and interrupts. Therefore, before pushing in, I make sure to have two rejuves on myself and add a Cenarian Ward to that as well. Now, as you can see, I get interrupted, but it's not at all an issue here. My hots will keep me alive until I can get back to safety. So, does this mean that you should always pre-hot yourself before you push in for CC? Well, not exactly. Always make sure to keep a close look at your Omnibar to see what kind of stuns and mobility the enemy team has available. As you can see here, the enemy melees are preoccupied with hitting my teammates and we are very close to winning the game. Landing a Cyclone here could be game winning and if I do get switched to, I have more than enough cooldowns to survive with. Beyond that, when you are being targeted, your first priority should always be to use your toolkit to get away from enemies as soon as possible. So, how do you escape as a Resto Druid? Well, priority number one will be to use your Wild Charge to charge to one of your teammates and get to safety. However, make sure that if you are facing a Death Knight that they don't have Death Grip available when you Wild Charge, as you will have a very hard time escaping if you use that and then get gripped back. If your teammates aren't in a position where you can easily wild charge to them or aren't in a good position, you can swap to travel form first, making an easy escape on many maps. But there are still going to be a lot of situations where you won't be able to escape that easily. What should you be doing in order to take as little damage as possible while being targeted? Well, step number one is to put hots on yourself as soon as possible. If you get caught in a situation where you have none, overgrowth is a very good choice in scenarios like this. As soon as you have some hots on yourself, make sure to shift into bear form for the additional stamina and armor to take as little damage as possible while people have uptime on you. A small tip here that some people might not know about is that you can actually use nature's swiftness for a big regrowth on yourself without ever leaving your current form. But obviously you won't be able to sit in bear form forever. Even though you are taking reduced damage, your hots will run out at some point and you'll be forced to refresh them. Try to shift out of slows and get to a position where you can refresh your hots without being stunned right as you leave bear form. Tracking enemy stuns using the Omnibar add-on is incredibly important to ensure that you won't die in stuns as a Resto Druid. Shifting slows is one of the most important aspects of surviving on this class. Every time you shift into a shapeshift form, it removes all slows and roots from you. Combining this with travel form is a great way to escape. For instance, you're being targeted and you are sitting in bear form to reduce the physical damage that you're taking as much as possible. You can now shift into travel form, as it gives you 40% extra movement speed. If the enemy now reapplies a slow, you can shift into bear form again, removing that slow. After a few seconds of shifting, you'll eventually create distance, which allows you to re-hot yourself in safety. 
So we've established that most of your healing comes from your hot effects and occasional big regrowths with Soul of the Forest and Nature Swiftness. Well, there are also some additional tips and tricks to maximizing your Restoration Druid healing. Most of this will come down to maximizing the value of your Verdant Infusion Legendary. Step one is to, like mentioned previously, have a full set of hots on someone, then apply your Scenarian Ward. After the Scenarian Ward procs, use your new Swift Men to increase the duration of both your Scenarian Ward and your other hots. Then that same Swift Men will give you a Soul of the Forest buff, which you can use on Rejuvenation. Now you will have a full set of Empowered Hots with a long duration. With every Swift Men from now, you should try to keep these extended as long as possible. This will be an absolute ton of healing, and making sure that you have these empowered sets of hots is extremely important to maximizing your healing output on this class. Now, while empowering your hots and extending them using Soul of Forest and Verdant Infusion makes up the majority of min-maxing your healing, there are also two more abilities which can really help to push your healing to that next level, which might often get overlooked in an arena setting. Like we explained earlier, mastery is an extremely important part of maximizing your healing as a Resto Druid. The two hots that are often forgotten are Wild Growth and Tranquility. You can Wild Growth occasionally for extra mastery healing if the incoming damage is extremely high. Try not to do it too often though, as it costs quite a lot of mana. Tranquility is also good to use in order to deal with high incoming damage, as you can cast the spell and then immediately cancel it. The hot effect will still apply, making you do 5-10% to more healing depending on how much mastery you have. Alright, now that you know all about healing as a Resto Druid, are there any interactions with other classes that you should know about as well? Well, as you should know, Resto Druid heavily relies on HOTS for the majority of their healing. We've gone over this. However, all HOTS with the exception of Scenarian Ward are purgeable, which is a huge issue. As you can see here, the mage uses Kleptomania and removes all of the HOTS, but Scenarian Ward does not get removed. In order to make sure that you don't get purged easily, make sure to always shield your other HOTS by using Life Bloom. Life Bloom will bloom for an increased amount of healing once purged. On top of regular purges, something that you should be careful about is that mage spell Kleptomania. It is extremely important to track this spell as the enemy mage will steal every single magic effect from their target. If you blindly use Overgrowth versus Mages, Mage Rogue in particular, your teammates will have no hots during the enemy setup as the mage simply steals them all. Another spell that you'll need to pay close attention to, especially as a Resto Druid compared to other healers, is Mind Games. So if Mind Games is on you, your subsequent healing that you do is turned into damage until you've healed through or dispelled the debuff. As a Resto Druid, this is especially important, as oftentimes you will already have HOTS active on yourself or your teammates. If you cannot dispel mind games on yourself, you might have to use a Cancel HOTS macro in order to not die from mind games while it's on you. And our final interaction that Resto Druid has to be careful of is when up against a rogue. We've all been there. The enemy rogue smoke bombs your teammate and you can't heal them, and then you subsequently drop combat and get sapped. However, as a Resto Druid, even if you are not in line of sight of someone on your team, or if they are in a smoke bomb, Tranquility actually ignores all line of sight. This means that you can utilize this spell to remain in combat while also doing a marginal amount of healing. All right then everyone, that's it for this Restoration Druid healing guide. We hope that you found this guide interesting, and by now you should know all the ins and outs of healing properly. Let us know below if you enjoyed this type of video and what other content you would like to see next. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.